The senator representing Abia South Senatorial District in Naya Abaribe has blamed the governors of the Southeast states for the lingering insecurity in the zone. He noted that the political differences of the governors have hampered any effective resolution of the security situation in the zone. He cited the example of the failure of the state governors to jointly fund the Ibubeagu Zonal Security Outfit. Well, joining us to discuss this further is legal practitioner Emeka Mwadioke and political analyst Francis Chilaka. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you, Miriam. Thanks for having me. Great. Mr. Mwadioke, uh, you and I spoke um, in the midst, uh, or in, yes, just before and after the Anambra elections, and we spoke on issues of insecurity um, within the states, which were concerns uh, as that election was going on. But then also uh, neighboring Imo uh, states and other you know, parts of the Southeast have been experiencing a fair, uh, you know, uh, their fair share of insecurity. Now, I remember also that um, the governor of Imo state had uh, um, a security summit with governors from the Southeast. And as of, as at today, we're still yet to see what, if, uh, in effect, that meeting was about and, and if there be any changes whatsoever. Um, yes, uh, it's, it's really not surprising that uh, there hasn't been any much uh, result from that summit, so-called, uh, because fundamentally um, the, there's a big uh, disconnect between the, uh, the Southeast Governors Forum, as we as we understand. Um, the, you can probably say that they are in disarray. Uh, if you use that word, it won't be, it won't be entirely wrong. Uh, they've not been, they've not been working as, as a unit. You can even say they are working across purposes. There's no unity. There's no, uh, no amity. There's no cohesion. There's no probably no leadership. So um, it wouldn't then be surprising if the security situation in the zone is uh, is uh, just as chaotic as the, that uh, body. Hmm. Interesting, uh, Francis. I I travelled from Anambra to through Enugu. Um, and I realised that Enugu State seems to be relatively peaceful. And and the question on my mind was, what was the Enugu State government doing differently that other states in the southeast? could not borrow a leaf from Francis? Um, well, you need, you, you need to understand where this whole thing is coming from and the heat of um, the insecurity in the Southeast. Um, if, if you take a, a, a proper look at the, the political terrain in the Southeast, you'll know that Enugu has always been a very quiet state. Um, it used to be Anambra that was hot, then Abia because um, these are the two uh, predominant states as at the time that you would talk of Biafra and then they would arise. But now it's moved to Imo. Um, so Enugu gets its own beat once in a while. And I would say that what the governor is doing is also trying to carry everybody along. There is no, there's not much heat in terms of um, um, political gladiators in Enugu state. That's, that is one thing I give to them. They, you know, they're not they're not they're not doing a do or die politics like you have in other in other southeastern states where you know an ex governor wants to assert himself and you know claim to be or to tell the present governor that I, I put you there or I am still in charge. So it's 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 what you have playing out in other states that is not playing out in Enugu is that the the Enugu state governor doesn't really have anybody you know, fighting with him or anybody dragging the political um, seat with him. But in other states where you have gotten um, a high level of insecurity, check it out. You'll find out that there's, um, there's a serious political war going on amongst the political gladiators so, so in those states. I'm curious, are you insinuating that the all the insecurity that as we've, we've been reporting on in the South East um, are as a result of politics? I mean, we've heard that according to reports that, and security agents, that some of these um, um, problems that we're facing, especially when the, the police stations were burned down, the prison was hit, they attributed that to the IPOP guys, even though IPOP had come out to say, this wasn't us. So you're telling me 
that these these insecurities and unrest in the southeast are done or taken or perpetrated by political oppositions uh, to the government of the day is this what you're saying see um we, we, we need to we need to be able to say things the way they are hmm. um would who who amongst the ordinary nigerians would wake up tomorrow and carry arms to go after uniformed men who would do that Nigerians that you and I know, that you and I belong to, that you and I relate with, are people who are looking for their everyday needs. Now, who has the money to mobilize people, to buy guns, to arm people? It's people who are seeking for political relevance. People who want to become the governor, they want to become senator, they want to become honorable members. These are the people that are creating the entire chaos you're having in the southeast but you see there's something we don't we, we should also forget um you need to understand that the people of the southeast generally have not have not forgotten operation python dance and they have also not forgotten the issue of extrajudicial killings that are said to be targeted at young evil men in one guise or the other now all of this it, you know when you have situations like this it is easy for anybody who wants to create or torment trouble to take advantage of such situations? And that is what is playing out in the South right now. Hmm. Uh, but I'm wondering, okay, the Southeast has been asking for an opportunity to play with the big boys. And when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the, you know, a, a shot at the presidency. Um, many have said, well, nobody's stopping the Southeast from, you know, throwing its hat into the ring and, and producing credible candidates in that regard. Now, we've heard a, a few you know, people from the Southeast who have said they want to run a uh, Boeing State Governor, um, uh, former um, 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 Governor um, Peter Albi, um, and a few others who may not be as big as he is. But uh, that, on the other hand, uh, that's on one side. On the other hand, we see uh, Senator Baribe saying or accusing governors of bad leadership in the Southeast. Hence, the reason why they're unable to deal head on with the issue of insecurity do you agree that maybe bad leadership is a, a result of what is happening in the southeast or do you think these governors are overwhelmed by all that's happening and it's not the job of the just these governors to put an end to insecurity uh, yes it's um, actually a combination of a lot of factors uh, apparently there's uh, a deep uh, disconnect between the the governance and the, the youth, you know, um, the issue of marginalization is there, uh, you know, the issue of discrimination is there. And um, so you see a situation where uh, when you now combine this with more or less absence of leadership, uh, you have you have a serious uh, matter at hand. Because really what is at stake is that uh, the youth don't trust the leadership uh, anymore, so to speak. Um, so you see a kind of leadership vacuum. Whether you're looking at the Southeast Governors Forum, then uh, probably the Ohanese that should have uh, maybe been uh, a, a filler for the absence of leadership at the Southeast Governors Forum level. Uh, also had its own challenge with its crisis in the election. And uh, then a kind of credibility uh, to crisis, you know. So uh, you then see a situation where there's uh, really more, there's no leadership. And um, again, when you also track back to the fact that, uh, you know, there were killings of the, of the youth and uh, there wasn't kind of, uh, you know, maybe uh, recompense or even... Uh, Know, the leadership trying to relate with that uh, and maybe calm the boys and all that. Um, so you now see a kind of distrust between the youth and the leadership. Uh, then you have probably also the issue of ungoverned spaces. A lot of uh, spaces in the east now are ungoverned and uh, it's almost like a killing field. Hmm. And they can actually blame uh, anybody. So, at the critically also, you see that recently, President Olusegun uh, Obasanjo, who should know, actually said that there are three categories in that uh, group. 
And this, uh, he talked about the generally frustrated uh, youths and the militants. He actually lumped them together. And you can take uh, the militants along with the, with the IPOP. You know, then he, he, he had this other group which he called the, uh, the those sponsored by the politicians. Then you have a third category which he called the criminals. So, uh, so when you look at this uh, categorization, you then see what is actually playing out. Um, so it's, it's quite uh, unfortunate. So if we're having a free for all, permit me to use that word because of the three categories that you've painted. How do the young people, or how do these people who are putting their foot forward to run for presidency in the southeast hope to deal with the issues here? Because um, we've seen former uh, Senate President Ayim Pius Ayim also saying he wants to run. You need these young people to, um, you know, band behind you and support you. And if these people, uh, one way or the other, are saying that they're being given the short end of the stick, is there really hope for a Southeast president? Whether now or in the future? I think that we lost uh, the barrister. Are you still there? I think that we lost him. Okay, Francis, I'm going to toss this question to you quickly before we wrap up. Okay. Um, you see, my, my, my personal problem with, um, with the political class is that the political class uh, over time has grown to become very mean and wicked and um, they do not care about the people. The political class only cares about the people uh, when they want the vote of the people. That is when the people matter to them. And so, you know, right now we, we can see universities are, are, are on strike, the lecturers are on strike. Now, these are the same youths that are meant to be leaders of tomorrow. So, you, because elections is coming up, nobody's paying attention to any other thing in this country. The national grid has been down, no light, no electricity. So, it, it, it's not just saying you want these youths behind you. It's the person, the thing is, what are you offering these youths? I don't see, I don't understand why somebody will be in the Senate for eight years, 12 years, you know, going, and you do not have any impact on the lives of the people that have sent you to represent them. And then you, you leave the Senate, you want to go and contest, become either a governor or a president. You know, it doesn't add up. Mm. You know, I think that we need to, as a people, begin to prioritize what we want in this country. And I've always said, it is not what the leaders want that should play out. It is the leaders listening to know what the people want and giving them what they want. I mean, look at the whole structure called Nigeria. You know, right now, it is as if there is nothing moving forward. We're not moving forward. We're just stagnant. The youths are out there, you know, committing suicides, going into hard drugs, going into prostitution. And yet, we have people that have been elected as leaders that are receiving high and um, receiving very... Uh, a normal salary, and yet, and yet, the youths are still suffering. The Nigerians are still suffering. So for me, anybody who comes forward to tell me, oh, I want to be president, you know, I need to know what are you bringing to the table? Mm. We must, we must, as a people, begin to make demands to know what are you bringing to the table? What is your pedigree? What have you done in the past? How have you been able to impact lives? And not how have you been able to steal our commonwealth? Okay. Finally, Barisan Waduke, I think you have joined us again quickly. Um, what's the future for uh, the Southeast, whether it be the youths or the people of the state? Now, aside from a number of states that's been deliberate in picking the people who've led them so far, which is impressive, um, the likes of Imo, Abia, Eboi, what's the future? Because Francis has made a case that it's not necessarily what the politician wants. It should be us setting, um, you know, the tone for the conversation. We should be the ones telling them what to do. But how interested in uh, in this governance thing uh, are the people in the Southeast? Are they as deliberate as the Anambra people to make sure that there's a future and a hope for Igbo people in Nigeria? The, uh, the, people, are, the people are quite uh, deliberate about uh, who they want. The people are quite deliberate about uh, the outcome of the political uh, process. But, you know, when you have uh, a situation where maybe at the end of the day, it's not even the voter that decides, 
probably the courts that may pronounce um, some uh, some verdict that may not be acceptable to the people. Uh, this may also even create uh, you know challenges even for the security situation. And uh, also you look at also whether the the president is act, uh, actually has the political will to also tackle the security situation in the southeast. Uh, all these things are, you know, have to be put in the book. So at the end of the day, uh, definitely uh, the people are determined to choose their leaders. And, uh, mm. You know, dealing with uh, all the issues about marginalization and all that uh, obviously will uh, help. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you to Emeka Nwadiuke, a legal practitioner and a political analyst, Francis Chilaka. Mm -hmm. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. All right. Well, we want to thank you all for being part of the program. That's the size of the show tonight. We'll leave you with what Nigerians feel or are saying about the PDP. If they can change the country, come 2023. I'm Mary Anacone. I'll see you tomorrow. By the grace of God, this country is for Nigeria. And uh, I believe anybody saying he will develop this country is a verbal talk. Personally, my opinion is that God is the only one that can put somebody that will make this country to be a... Promises have been made several times. And I believe, well, we don't have anybody to say, actually, this is the person that will make the... that will be the God sent. But well, let's give any person a trial. Because with a trial, it may even work out. No, it far remains that um, it's not all about the party. It's all about uh, a person and uh, his own personality. So, unlike me, I don't vote party, but I vote uh, people's personality. So, whosoever that wants to come in, maybe as a PDP, and if he believes that it will not fail Nigerians, he can, he can come in. There is no problem about that. And what the masses need is for them to give us a good result. We've given APC eight years, and for me as a youth, there is nothing tangible that they've done. So let's try PDP. Or if possible, let's try any other party who can actually spring up with someone new. Let's try up new things. For me personally, I would say let's try up new things because we are tired of these old men we've been seeing since 1999. So let's try up new guys. <laughs> ah, to me, it, I, I, I believe in God choosing president for us. It is only who God chooses that can develop this country, not uh, has anything to do with that PDP or APC. Even in another party, let the person be God-choosing candidate. I think that is the best thing for us in this country.